hit me in the face once, and then I just lost my. There's no law against bringing a bull to school. Okay. I'm just like letting go. In today's video, we're uncovering the truth of students who think they can dodge responsibility without knowing the full weight of the law. This isn't just about youthful ignorance. It's a pattern of reckless behavior that can lead to serious consequences. Take the young 18-year-old Christian Hillman, our first case, who tried to talk his way out of trouble, unaware that his actions carried severe legal repercussions beyond his imagination. Inspector Jay, over and out. During a 2016 road rage incident in Southern Kent County, Christian Hillman got into a confrontation with 64-year-old William McFarlane while out on his dirt bike. In the aftermath of the conflict, the 18-year-old found himself in a police station at one in the morning. Um, me and my buddies, we were riding, and all of a sudden, this guy in this truck just pulled up behind me. And he so you were on what? What were you driving? Who was I driving? Yeah. I was driving the uh, PCR 230. Okay. You gotta look that bike up nice, man. I will. It's nice, man. But anyhow, um, the guy in the truck pulled up behind me and he started blaring his horn at me. And I had no idea why. Let me ask you this. Where were you at when you were riding? This guy pulled up behind you. Where were you at? Well, I don't know if you guys know the area. I do. I used to work years ago when I worked the street. I used to work there. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, do you know, like, 52nd and Whitneyville? I know where 52nd, where the railroad tracks are there. Yes. Okay. Yep. You're an OG, bro. The perpetrator shows absolutely no interest in the processions or the outcome of the interrogation and instead chooses to brag about his vehicles and tries his best to paint a favorable picture of himself. This truck pulls up behind you and it's just kind of following. Yeah, like, he turned his brights on, he was trying, he, like, tried to run me off the road. Like, I t t it's a small dirt bike. He pulled up the side and he started pushing me off to the side of the road. Like, I almost crashed a couple times. And that's when I was starting to get irritated because, I mean, that's just disrespectful. Like, why you... I pulled over to a church parking lot to let him go by, and he stopped. And then I, I honestly think he was intoxicated. Mm -hmm. Because he got out and he was slurring his words and everything. Christian insisted that his actions were in self-defense and he shouldn't be punished. However, he was clearly unaware that incriminating evidence, including a blood-stained steel shoe, had already been found. Car, he put his hands on my neck like he was trying to strangle me. Did he say anything? Yeah, he was, he was talking a lot of stuff. Was anyone around besides you? Oh, uh, yeah, some other people pulled up. Who, who pulled up? I have no idea who those people were. They were just uh, bystanders. Did they say anything? Or? Not really. They just looked. They, they saw him put his hands around your neck? Um, who could have So he put his hands around your neck, and like you were... It was like a really hard, it wasn't just like a plate, like he was trying to strangle me. And then what did you do? Well, like I used, I used to be an ex-heavyweight boxer. So he basically, he hit me in the face once and then I just lost my Okay. Like I just, I don't know. Like I really feel bad about it. Like, I really don't like resorting to violence. Like, I hate violence, man, sure. but, but I just lost my temper. Oh. Basically, after that, I, I kept hitting him, and I was telling him to please stay down for I have to hurt you more. Like, I really don't like hurting people, but he was going to hurt me if I didn't stop it. Okay. So I, I just had to completely make sure, like, he was immobilized. He couldn't hurt me. He couldn't hurt my friends. Your friends? Who was your friends? Just if any other one of my boys would have pulled up, like I don't want him freaking out ahead of me either. Like I, I caused the situation. I take like full responsibility for my actions. So then it sounds like you you gave him a beatdown, is the way you described it, right? Yeah. And then what? How did it end? What What happened at the end? Well, he was he was just laying there. 
But I really knocked him out cold because I didn't want him to get back up. However, one of Christian's friends posted a graphic picture of him on social media after the altercation, proving that his intentions behind the attack were much more malicious and more than just self-defense. You said that after he was gurgling, the guy was gurgling, and you, you guys left, got out of there, and you contemplated on what had took place, what were you guys talking about? Like afterward? Mm -hmm. Nothing, we're just trying to forget about it. Like I lost my temper, I did I, I really hate being angry. Sure. Like it's it's one of the worst things, the worst feelings, but how long so what time is it by now, do you know? Right now? No, when you when this incident happened and when you left and got back home. Oh man. Um What time is it right now? It's like one in the morning now. Oh, for real? Yeah, one twenty. I'm surprised you guys are still up to stop, to be honest. What time did you guys get back from after riding? Do you know? I don't know, you don't know. Oh, like, no, right after all that stuff happened, we wrote. Do you know what time all that took place or no? Oh, uh, I was riding my bike, so I didn't really okay. have time to look at my phone. So then you, where do you, where do you put these bikes and the ATV and where, where did you put them? In the shed or where, where did you put them? Oh, they're in my garage. Okay. So then you put those in the garage, and then what did you guys do? The same thing as usual. We just shut the garage door, shut the ATV and the dirt bike in there. Then I went inside, smoked a couple cigarettes. From the footage, it seems that Christian was the least bit bothered by his victim's well-being, having not even bothered calling 911. I finally saw the trucks, I pulled up, and he was like right there, and this dude's like laying there unconscious, and I'm like, and he's like, dude, he choked me. And I was like, what? And I was like, we need to go, bro. You just knocked him out. Let's go, bro. And he's like, all right, bro, let's go. And he was like trying to like pick up his dirt bike. And like people started showing up and started like talking to all these people and everything. And I was like, I was just like sitting on the, the, on the ATV like, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck. And then he got on and we just jetted back to his grip. And Christian said he laid hands on him and Christian just beat the shit out of him. And she said it was complete self-defense. Like, I've known Christian for a while now. You know what self-defense is? I mean, it's like when someone, like, attacks you and you use, like, I would say, I, well, yeah, I, I guess a little bit. Did that sound like this scenario? Uh, as badly as he was hurting, I couldn't tell. Uh, honestly, as badly as he was hurting, do you think this is self-defense? No. Christian still claimed innocence but there was clearly more to the story. Interestingly, even his friend admitted that regardless of provocation, Christian's actions had gone too far. Do you know why he had him take his picture? No. Did he ask him to take his picture? No. Did, did Christian ask him to take it? No. I'm not, I'm not really sure, like, the picture was just taken. I think he just didn't even say anything, just took the picture. Okay. Did you take any pictures of him? No. no? I just want to forget that. Like, I didn't want any pictures of it. You said you have not had any contact with Christian since? No. Nope. Via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, these are all things we can check. Yep. No contact with No contact. Okay. Don't even have his number. So you're mainly... But I, I think I had some information that wasn't mentioned through all of this. Christian's severe actions still have no apparent reason. That is, until a friend of his revealed some important information. How do you know that? He told us, or he told me. So Christian told you he was on? Yeah, two bars of Xanax. Anything else? And then I witnessed him take two more that night, when I told him not to. So when he came in this office, that means he was on it. Oh, he was tripping when he was here. Yeah. That was clear. And I think that's what started the fight. He, he felt like he was invincible because he was on Christian's friend's confession that he was intoxicated at the time is further evidence that Christian was unreasonable and his attack was not in self-defense, leaving it unjustified as a whole. No. Well, well, we need you to be completely honest with everything. Oh, I'm, I'm being completely honest with you guys. Okay. Not being completely honest with everything, okay? And, you know, and, and you know, I don't want to appreciate you 
you're, you're trying to come up with a story that, yeah, it was self-defense and this guy grabbed me by the neck and I don't have the forms with me, but do you realize there was an event at the church when this whole thing took place? You were so angry, you did not realize who was around, who was watching, who was listening. So, you know, what I said earlier, and I know you're concerned, you said, you know, I don't want to go to got to be honest but the thing is you're not being 100% honest okay because there's two sides to the story okay one is yours two and three is your buddies four is the victim so then you kind of look all right is the victim story going to match up to your story but in this case it's easy because we can take your story out and a victim story out and we can talk to witnesses who don't know you and don't know the victim so for a case like this, it's simple. I mean, we just talked to the witness. What'd you see? What'd you hear? Who did what? Who did what next? It's, it's, it's better than catching it on video because you have witnesses who don't even know you and don't know. It's different if I say, Christian, yeah, we got two witnesses. Well, who are they? Well, it's the victim's cousins. Well, then that doesn't make sense. Of course, they're gonna say, you did this. These are church folks is leaving a church, driving off, and witness this whole thing go down. And you guys didn't realize that they're standing watching this thing go down. They watched what you did, what you guys did. They heard what was said and what happened. And that's how we ended up there. It's because they were the ones that called 911. This is not a test understandable. So... Your story is not even close to what these witnesses, these poor folks, saw. It's not true. Can I get an attorney in here? Christian, as a citizen, has rights, but throughout the interview, addressed the officers as a bro, which is seen as disrespectful, which gave them the right to cuff Christian to his chair. Any questions? I'm just going to talk for a second. Yeah, okay. go for it. All right? How old are you? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you walked up in here, and you're talking to my partner, calling him bro. He's over twice your age. You should be calling him sir. I did call him what, what I'm sitting here listening to, why I'm sitting here in my chair, is listening to a kid who thinks that he's just talking with two guys instead of understanding the gravity of why he's sitting in this room. And you need to grow up, young man. Sir, can you please stop raising your voice? No, I will not, because you know what? You are not going to tell me what to do. Do you I understand? Will, I will file a complaint on Go ahead, it. do it. Go ahead. Go give me my fucking lawyer. You, you think this really? Is Go do it. You see what I mean? Huh? Sitting there calling me a nigger? I never even called you a nigger. my partner I, here? I never even called you a nigger. No. Really? What did you just say? That's your problem. That's why you don't understand the gravity of why you're sitting in this chair at 1.30 in the morning. Because you're a kid who thinks he's a tough guy. And you want us to sit there and believe that you're just driving down the road on your ATV and this guy's honking his horn and you didn't do nothing wrong? You got an attitude and it shows by the way you're talking to my partner on the end. Clearly fed up with Christian's indecency and indifference to the situation, the police officer decided to give him a piece of his mind. We're doing a search warrant at your house right now. So my boss is out there at the house. I got a search warrant. Magistrate signed it. So, um, but I got nothing to hide in my house, man. I, I, I know. I, I hear you. But I'm just letting you know what's what's going on. I mean, I don't want you to think that I'm doing anything. I'm, I'm not oh, making no, it yeah, up. Yeah, you keep it on 100, bro. And, uh, you know, there is blood. Inside of that, inside of that garage, and in my garage, Chris. <laughs> okay. I, I I don't know how, what else, what other way to tell you, man. I'm I'm not making this up. Okay. Oh yeah, I know you're not making it up. Yeah, inside of your garage, yes. Inside of your garage. So what's going on with the attorney situation? We don't get we, you an attorney. Don't get you you ask for an attorney, that's on you to get an attorney. Okay, but I'm supposed to be publicly appointed ones. You don't understand how the process works, do you? It's not our job. 
Well, who, whose job is it? Because I'm not your about, job. I'm not about to answer a bunch more questions. I know we're my not asking. We're not asking you any questions, Christian. Then what question did we ask since you said you wanted an attorney? Well, I mean, I mean, the thing is, he put me in these for absolutely no damn reason. I'm just sitting here cooling. Okay. okay. I, I don't understand it. You're being detained right now. Okay. Listen, we're gonna get the search warrant done, and we'll uh, decide what's gonna happen next. Okay. How can we get a hold? Really? You guys don't need to contact them. They had nothing to do with it. Well, here's the thing. You're not running this investigation, so it's not your decision on who we're going to talk to. Well, yeah, but they're not going to talk to you. How do you know? You don't know what somebody else is going to do. Oh, but damn sure I do. Okay. Hey, yo, get my attorney, too. Hey, yo, we don't do that. All right, well, give me my mom's phone so I can call my lawyer. By telling the detectives that his friends wouldn't talk to him, Christian just increases suspicion that he is guilty of a possibly heinous crime. Hello? Want to come down to the police station? Well, I have the, um, the detectives here right now. All right, well, what are they saying to you? And why, what are they searching? Um, for the clothes that you wore. The clothes that were? Oh. You left them in the house. So they have a warrant. Oh, they had a warrant? Yeah. <sighs> I'm sure they don't want to wear your dirty underwear. Alright, no. This is not a laughing matter. I know I'm sorry. Yeah, like, the, I'm really pissed. They had me chained to the floor. They chained you to the floor? Yes, I'm pissed. Why would they change? They chained you to the floor? Yes. By asking to call an attorney, Christian instead chooses to call his mother and throw a temper tantrum. Now, it was very clear why he had turned out such a way. We don't put in requests. That's, <laughs> that, none of that happens. That's not real. None of that's real. I mean, if you're locked up tonight, you're going to get what you get. I mean, we don't... Oh, man, I've, I've slept on worse, believe me. Okay, yeah, but I mean, don't... I don't, I don't get what this kind of facade is, I mean, it's like, no, we don't put request in for a double mattress in your own room, and this isn't a hotel. I mean, oh, oh, that's not, not like a double mattress, bro. I mean, like, like double mat. They don't do that, dude. They just oh, don't. No. no. I mean, that's pretty way. But it's not it's supposed to be plush, and... Oh, I know it's not supposed to be pleasant. So what I have to do is wait for you to call me and the detectives are in, but they're bringing you some clothes to put on because they're going to keep the clothes you got on. They took your boots. Wait, wait, wait. They took my boots? What boots? Your blue ones because they have blood all over them. Don't come home? No, no. Please come home. Why please come home? I want you to please come home. Why? Well, you don't have to tonight if you don't want to. No, why do you want me home now? Well, because of everything that happened. They just asked me, well, you know, he's going to think of where he goes tonight. They won't keep you. Wait, what? They're going to let you, you'll probably be able to get out of the, get out of the, the detective department tonight and come home. But if you don't want to come home, then you can do what you want. It is shocking to hear Christian's mother feeding into his delusions right after he had committed such a heinous crime. Hey, man. Uh, this dude's going to uh, document your injuries that you got to your hands, your neck. I have injuries in my neck. You said he choked you, right? Yeah, he, like, he grabbed me around here. Right, so you should have injuries there. Okay. Yeah. Right. What I need you to do is stand up right here. I'm going to take some overalls to show this is you. I'm going to need a little help here first. Okay, I think that's what you're working on. <laughs> After this interrogation, an investigation ensued. With all the information gathered, Christian was officially charged with intent to commit great bodily harm less than murder. However, after William McFarland succumbed to his injuries in the hospital, he was charged with second-degree murder. In the official court proceedings, the following decision was made. On Monday, July 24th, Kent County Circuit Judge George Quist sentenced Christian Hillman to prison for 22 and a half to a 100 years on the conviction 
for second degree murder. Hillman will receive credit for 267 days already served in jail. In explaining the decision, Quist called the assault on McFarland a heinous and vicious attack that deprived a family of a husband, father, and grandfather. There's no law against bringing up to school. Okay, I'm just like letting you know. On May 2nd, 2023, an Orange High School student, Nolan Rosen, would appear to be just routinely attending his classes, or at least he claimed to be, as officers discovered something in his vehicle that very heavily suggested otherwise. Something, somebody find something you know about? Because I had a in my pocket, but it wouldn't like, it's not like I'm planning anything. Oh, okay. I dropped Wait, something. You, you, okay. But I don't know, I'm not allowed to bring a bullet. Okay. Okay, why don't you call him? He's gonna call Wait, I'm not like a school sh**. No, let me have, let me have your book back, okay? And I'll call you go with me, okay? Mr. Most program I got him. Okay. I go upstairs with one of them with him. Wait, if I was a school shooter, I wouldn't tell you. No, I didn't. I understand. Today's day is good, you know, they gotta clean everything safe. That's nice. Right. 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 Just right. Well, everybody gotta be careful, no one. Well, I have a 22 Henry rifle. Okay. Henry rifle. Gotcha. Well, uh, I'm kind of like sentimental about it. Oh. So, I don't, I use it, I use it, well, I don't shoot it, but I use it as like a comfort thing, kind of. That makes sense. Well, let me, let me let me ask you this while I got you right here. Just be honest with me. You didn't bring any gun to school, did you? No. That's the only one you had one round? Yeah. Okay. Got I wouldn't, like, bring a gun to school. No, okay, I know. But That's you, not my intention. You know I gotta ask, though, right? There was, a, was there a bullet found there? This has got to be the reason we're doing all this. Because... Okay. okay. No, but I'm just letting you know, like... Like, I didn't want to cause any problems or any trouble. Right, right. No, I understand. Okay. And I looked it up. It said there's no statute for uh, bringing up. Like, there's no law against bringing a bullet to the school. Okay. I'm just, like, letting you know. The school was placed under a lockdown after Rosen's discovered when he cluelessly revealed himself to the officers and was subsequently brought to the head office. No, but I understand how it, it brings a concern up in the air. Um. Hey, can you put that Gatorade down real quick? Of course. All right, just turn around, face over here real quick. Put your hand on that table for me. Oh, I got more. I got two. Okay, don't put your hand in your pocket. Just keep your hands on the okay. table. Just put them on the table. table. Just put them on the table for me real quick, okay? So I'm gonna have to search you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that'd be nice. So you had yeah, two bullets in this one? These are yours? Right here. Okay, we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay. Literally, if I thought I was doing anything wrong, I wouldn't bring I, I got you. You just know in today's day, you can be too safe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in the school environment, that's all. The black one? The one I'm searching. Right there. Okay, that's all of them? Yeah. Alright, so I do gotta continue searching, that's all. So. Literally, I'm gonna look this up. Your favorite, uh, kick your shoes off for me. You don't mind if you can take your uh, bandana off from this world. Yeah. It's unclear if Rosen was actually innocent or a bad shooter, but he worsened his case by repeatedly exposing himself or even bringing to school in the first place. Are these from a range? Did you no, I have a Henry repeating rifle, and I uh, kind of just use it as like a thing to like comfort me a little bit. At home or? Yeah. I don't like. I'm not. There's no ill. I have no ill intention. Okay. I know why it would raise a concern, but I'm not like. I'm really scared about that stuff. Like school shooters do. I'm like very uh. It like, makes me anxious too that anyone can just walk into school and shoot it up. So I'm like. Do you worry about that? Yeah, I worry about that stuff a lot sometimes. What made you bring those with you? Just because literally it makes me feel comfortable. It's the only reason. Having those with you makes you comfortable? I mean, well, I had um, I had the rifle earlier and I must have forgot they were in my pocket. Uh, earlier where? Did you drive here? Yeah. But I have no, literally, no one has like, bad intentions of any. I just carry a rifle around because it's like comfortable and it's not illegal to the 
If this was Rosen's genuine excuse, then he needs to be sent back to the fourth grade. Keeping arms for safety is not illegal, but bringing it to a school certainly is. Well, not of course. Like, I don't carry it all the time, but I just literally carried it in my car. Like, I don't bring it in school. Is there a gun in your car right now? Yeah. Okay, let's go out. So, you, you'll you stay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, they're in my back. It's not an assault rifle, it's a, literally a 22 Henry repeating rifle. I didn't, I didn't ask for a small game. I just wanted to know if you had one there. Yeah. Not many people. Where are you parked? I can show you. What kind of car is it? A black Chevy. Chevy what? Uh, Blazer. Trailblazer? Yeah, no, Chevy Blazer. Where are your keys? Um, they're in one of those pockets. Or maybe. I put all your stuff right here. You can put all the back of the if you want. This should be in the bag though. Usually I just put the keys in my bag and then I'm good to go. Do you have anything in your locker? Do you use your locker? No, I don't use my locker. Is there something you're afraid of in particular? No, I literally just it's literally just a like a sentimental thing, kind of a it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it's one of those things where you carry around your blanket you like because it makes you feel comfortable and stuff like that. Nobody came to the door. Hey, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Come over there. Chevy Blazer. You want to stay yeah, with him? Do mind? I'll go. Rosen seemed completely out of excuses, as anything he said only made him seem guiltier, especially after revealing more arms in his car. What the? It's right here. Get your camera, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just just leave it right there for now. Yeah. It's basically like a, just a 22 rifle, right? Like something yeah. to shoot rabbits with. Rabbit squirrel. Yeah. We'll we'll check it. This is like a, like a single. You put it in there, I think. Yeah, I'm wondering if you gotta um, like cock that back to uh, to get inside. It doesn't, this is how you um, yeah like rack chamber it. it. Well, I know one way you can do it is you can you can actually take it apart. Mm. Oh, you got a little. Yeah, he's 18, so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. What the? I guess the higher ups want to do. They want to take him out of here and cuff? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, I mean, he's 18. He's 18. I give him his due process. You can come in with me, Todd. And then. the gun in the school. You want This is the single? This is the one he, that we found. Right so, okay. so let's secure this. Um. Just as Rosen confirmed, the officers discovered the arms that he said he brought, also clarifying that he was 18 and could be charged as an adult for his reckless actions. It's something that's been going on a long time. Like, are you just hyper aware of the news and what's going on around you? No, I literally just have a rifle because I got it for my birthday. Right, but then no, when it gives you comfort, you worry about school shooters and stuff, right? Well, I don't bring it because they're school shooters. I, I carry it around with me because it's, well, it's extra safety caution. I know that if I have it, I don't have to worry about being attacked or anything like that. Okay. It's the only reason I carry it around. And it can always still happen no matter what, right? Like, yeah, I know. Like, we can't control everything in life. Yeah, I know. Very sometimes. Yeah, for sure. For sure, even for us. It's just, I'm not a big guy. I'm like really small, so I, like if someone's really big, I'm gonna run away. I'm not gonna try to fight them. But then if someone's like actually trying to hurt me, I know I need some sort of weapon because I'm like really small. I've never had before. Yeah, you know, well, someone's tried to fight me before, but I've never really been in a serious assault or anything. Some of the toughest guys I know are smaller guys. Like <laughs> if they know what they're doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. In terms of protecting themselves. As Rosen waited, the officer used the moment to wholesomely address Rosen's insecurities showing that despite him not being very smart, 
he likely didn't intend to hurt anyone. Right, like you can never judge somebody by their size. That's a fool to think, too. Okay. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, we know better than to think bad about people yeah. that are smaller than us. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's really stupid. You know, that's smart that you said about running away. That's one of the best things you can do. You know, physical altercation or anything worse than that. Just yeah, run away. No, it's the not cops don't really do anything when you get hurt. Like, I could say I got punched, but then they're like, there's no scar there, so I can't do anything. Then we're not always there, right? Yeah. Right. A lot of he said, she said type things. Yeah. You know. um, do you have anxiety or anything? In yeah, I have, like well, that? I don't have like anxiety, but uh, being uh, getting into like physical altercations and stuff like that. So nothing clinical, just. No, no, I just get really anxious because there's a lot of fights at like and stuff. But well, that doesn't really matter because I can't bring the gun in like to help me fight them. And... Parents know how they feel about this stuff or not? No, I don't. Like, I don't bring the rifle because I'm like assuming I'm gonna have to use it. I just bring it because first of all, it looks cool, and second of all, it's like the comfort thing. It appeared that Rosen wasn't necessarily a bad kid, just incredibly ignorant of the law and very misguided, as firearms are not toys or things to be taken lightly. But by the way, like the guns in my car. Before I brought the gun, I like uh, I'm pretty sure like I'm, I was allowed to bring it. Like I don't think there was anything saying I'm not allowed to bring it. Okay, I got you. But I know, I'm, I know it's like a, Are you a senior? In the modern age, this is bad. Are you a senior? Uh, yeah, no, junior. Junior, okay. How old are you? Um, 17. Gotcha. 18, sorry. You're, you're 18? Yeah, I mean... Anyway, when you're 19 next year? Yeah. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm a little old for my grade, but... Oh, that's fine. I'm not like... I don't know. It's not too old. Yeah, not too But... Yeah. As long as I have friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's okay to be nervous too. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah, we're just glad he told us right away. They yeah. Saved a lot of like, trouble. Anguish for everybody. I know. Else, for sure. I bet someone found the bullet and they reported it and they were like, oh, yeah. anytime one of those is in school, it's a big deal. Look what just happened at West Chief. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they avoided like a whole shooting situation. Yeah. But like no one, like no one in the school is like, oh, that's the school threat. Like no one's ever scared me shooting up to school or anything like that. Like, no one ever talks about me like that in any sense. So there's no like, and I have friends at the school, so it's not like, you know what I mean? I'm not like one of those kids. You've never threatened anybody like that? Okay. Never, never you say I shoot again, but, or you know, like yeah. That? Never, like, never aim a gun. Not even like aim a gun. So were you at home shooting today, you said? No, I just carry it because it's like, when I have it in my hand, it feels nice. It's like, it's like your body kind of. I got you. I got you. You close with your dad? Um, kind of. Yeah, a little. Well, he's out of town a lot, so I'm home alone a lot too. Maybe that's why I carry the rifle around with me so much because I'm always like alone and my dad's not home a lot. But yeah. these older parents, how do you feel? You know, Did I tell them how I feel? Yeah, in terms of like, you know, the anxiety about um, no you know, danger and for somebody to get no. a jump on. But like when I go to work. Like in the future when I have a job, I'm probably going to bring the rifle in the car and the play parking in the parking lot. Rosen's deep insecurity and possible bullying definitely led to this reckless behavior and finding safety in weapons. However, many were not as quick to forgive him. Well, you're you have to worry that much about yeah. safety. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you have a family protecting you have a weapon at home, right, or something like that. You're coming to school, you should feel safe in school. So yeah. we're a little bit worried that you feel like that. Oh, okay. Like you're that much in danger at school. I mean, to be honest, some kids are like itching to fight. Like some of these kids. Yeah, there's a lot of hormones and stuff going on. Yeah. Now, you know. I just see a lot of videos where having the gun prevents like altercations or, or they, if they didn't have the gun. It would like be, online videos yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, a different outcome and stuff. Like there's one guy who was like 200 mm -hmm. pounds bigger than this guy and he comes up to his car and he's like, I want to fight you. It looks like he's about to rip him out of his car and the guy just pulls out a gun and the guy turns around and walks the other way and it's like, that's all it is. The situation's over. Just because he... Okay, we're both talking, like I said, I'm just presenting you with this right now. So I just, like, we'll talk after you're finished writing, but I just need you to sign that I presented you with what you put. I, didn't, I feel like I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Well, so why would I sign? So I didn't do, like, I feel like I did nothing wrong. Yet. Are you refusing to sign? No, I'm not refusing to sign. So either sign or don't sign. Well, what happens if I refuse to sign? Then I just have Mrs. Ferguson witness that I presented you with this. 
So it makes no difference. It actually makes no difference if you well, sign it. Well, this is saying I acknowledge and I knew there was a policy against. It doesn't say that. No, it doesn't say that. Just take a second to read through it. Well, by checking it off, you're basically no, saying I knew there was a it's, policy against that. I didn't that know there was a policy against not right. part of saying that you're facing potential So should I have checked the school's policies before bringing the gun? See, like, try to look through all the policies to make sure that I was allowed to bring it. Yeah, but you would have to sign that. That's just acknowledgement. It's not saying that you're guilty or anything like that. It's yeah, just I was gonna say, like, it. I thought I was allowed to, like, bring it in the parking lot. I mean, regardless, you're gonna have to either sign it or, um, or don't sign it, but... You know what I mean? I thought, I just thought, I thought I was allowed to bring the rifle in the parking lot. Okay. So that's like where I'm coming from, all right? I'm just saying. Okay. Right, fine. Despite the fact that Rosen may not have intended to harm anyone, he still unintentionally endangered students, but insisted he did nothing wrong. You still not right? Well, I'm just kind of explaining that I like, thought I was allowed to bring it, as long as I wasn't like, um, bringing it actually in the building. Uh, so I didn't like check the policy before I brought the gun. That's why I brought it, by the way. Okay. Like, I didn't, like, it's like r literally the only reason, my only justification is I didn't check the policy. But I like get how it sounds like when you say this kid brought a gun to school in this modern age, it sounds like my only intentions were to shoot the school, but my intentions weren't to shoot up the school. My intentions were to use it as a thing for a comfort thing, a thing to like calm me down a little bit and kind of like a sentimental thing a little bit. Well, surely you can imagine um, having a gun on school property is um, a major issue. So I am suspending you for 10 days with a recommendation for expulsion. So what happens now is the suspension, the suspension will start tomorrow. Um, and uh, only the superintendent can determine whether or not to expel the student. So I'm, I'm recommending you for expulsion. Since you are also on a 504 plan, um, somebody from the special education department will be reaching out to you because we're going to have to hold what's called a manifestation determination meeting. Um, but at this point, it is a 10-day suspension with the recommendation for expulsion for um, weapons, specifically a gun and disruption and misconduct. I have to go fill out the rest of the people. I didn't disrupt anything. Rosen quickly realized that even if he didn't mean any harm, actions still have consequences. The news of his suspension was something he would not take well. Walk with you out here, okay? Yeah. Just take a breath. You're just arresting me on a charge that's made up. I know. It's not you made, are, though. It's, made, it's, made, it's, up. Been, it's, been it's made up. It's made up. Oh, it's made up, dude. Make up it's we made don't up. Have the authority to make things up. So go ahead, sit in here and butt first. It's kind of cool in here, actually. It's all right. I put this I didn't grab all that stuff. Go ahead and look that way. I don't want to interfere with your tent. I didn't grab it. I don't want to I didn't, like, I had no idea the rifle was, like, a big deal. Okay, okay, okay. It's a 22 caliber. Listen, listen, it's not, like, listen, listen, fucking listen. assault okay. rifle. It's not, a, it's not like a made for killing. It's made for shooting small game. I understand. You'll have an opportunity to explain your version of why this played out or how this happened. Okay, you'll have that. Maybe right now to each of us is not the opportunity. Take a breath a minute. Try, try to relax a minute. we got to move forward, okay? Do you get what I'm saying? You'll have an opportunity to explain it. Rosen would later be held on trial and charged with possessing deadly weapons in the school safety zone, as well as inducing panic. The superintendent for the school remarked the following, I commend our staff and local law enforcement for their alertness and quick effective response to this situation. Providing a safe learning environment for our students and staff is a priority. We will keep you informed during these types of situations and ask that you remember that all accurate official information on these matters will come directly from the Orange schools. Please consider showing your support by liking this video, and also make sure to subscribe stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.